We are back in the arena. I'm John Young. On today's show, we're focusing on the status of the drainage pumps in New Orleans. Since August 5th, New Orleans residents are on edge with every rainfall. That day, parts of Mid-City, Lakeview, and Orleans Avenue were underwater with cars, homes, and businesses damaged. Even though the Sewage and Water Board claimed that all 24 pumping stations were fully operational, we later found out that not all the pumps were on or even worked. And then, less than a week later, a power outage sent the city's drainage system into crisis. It all led to a shakeup in the leadership of the Sewage and Water Board. And the mayor brought in an interim emergency management and support team to stabilize the city's drainage issues. But can they? To help us answer that question, we have a civil engineer with us today who is active in flood and drainage issues. H.J. Bosworth, Jr. is part of levees.org. Thanks for joining us in the arena, H.J. Thank you for having me. Good to have you. So I know you've been making the rounds. I know you've spent a lot of time as you, in your professional career studying issues uh, that are facing the city of New Orleans. Why don't you tell us what is the present status of drainage in the city of New Orleans? The present condition of the drainage system in New Orleans is partially broken. Uh, certainly 12 years ago we had you know, a catastrophic flood when the federal levees failed and um, at that point maybe half of the pumps were either offline or broken or under, somehow out of service. Gradually it got better till about 2012, 2013. Then the pumps started to break again. They started to go offline. I think the best year from 12 years ago to now were, was in 2013 where only two pumps on the East Bank were out of service. Now we're up to what, 16, 17 or so. And why is that? Why are there so many pumps out of service? Well, I've, I've talked to a lot of my colleagues and you know, they believe that certainly the changing of the guard with Joe Sullivan retiring and with many other of the old uh, seasoned professionals of the Sewage and Water Board retiring and the new people coming in, they had, they had lost a lot of what they needed to keep these old pumps running and to keep the, uh, keep the city dry. There were, there were other things that probably happened too. You know, you had, uh, you had politics that may have played into this. You have a sewage and water board that has been given reports year in and year out by the Black and Veatch Corporation, a big multinational firm, right. that you know, tells you what the uh, status of the pump stations is. Well, we, all, we know after uh, Katrina, $2 billion came from FEMA. Do we know what happened to that money? FEMA told the sewage and water board what to do with that money, and I believe carefully looked at what they were spending it on, whether it was spending it on, whether they spent it on drainage pump stations or power upgrades or I think they even reinforced the walls of the old pump stations by taking the old copper roof off, drilling holes in the walls, reinforcing the walls and then putting a new roof on all the old pump stations. That doesn't help with the drainage capacity. Not a whole lot, but when FEMA's paying the bills, you do what they tell you. So let's talk a little bit about the, 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 the power the 25 cycle power. I remember having many conversations with Joe Sullivan about that after Katrina. That needs to be changed, does it not? Uh, gradually they are changing out the old pumps and the new pumps certainly will work on 60 mm -hmm. cycle power, something that you can get at Entergy, you know, pretty readily. The, uh, the old pumps, to replace them all immediately would, would exceed their budget. You know, the sewage and water board this, just the drainage part lives on maybe $51 million a year from the taxpayers of the city of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with that money and FEMA money, they get to do what they need to do. Certainly, they've dropped the ball. You know, they've got management issues. They've got, uh, you know, personnel shortages. And uh, they make a lot of errors as yeah, the media has. Yeah, there's been has. a lot of mismanagement, misappropriation. There's an August 22nd, 2017 report from the IG that's been sounding warning signals since 2012. We all know uh, that, you know, whenever there's a, a, an issue with rain or flooding, uh, the system is designed only to drain one inch the first hour and a half an inch every hour thereafter. How can that or can that be improved? And if so, how much money would it, would it take to improve that, that system yeah. as it exists when it's operating at full capacity? To be accurate, the system itself can accept the first half inch. So it doesn't even have to be running to accept the first half inch. It can't handle twice as much the first hour than the other hours. It's just the, the box culverts and the drains and whatnot, that's what takes care of that half inch. The yeah, storage capacity, yes, so Yes, the speak. capacity. Okay. And to get it working right, really the best thing to do, everybody has a, a spare tire in their car, right? You don't keep a spare engine, but this is the sewage and water board. It wouldn't be bad to have spare engines and spare pumps and spare parts so that when anything comes down in a day, 
you can drop the new one in and send the old one to the shop. And it That's would, not what they do now. It would also be helpful to have people that actually operate the pump stations as well. I wonder who went out for coffee and never came back back in August, on August 5th. So going forward, what would, you know, as a civil engineer going forward, obviously it's going to be short-term, intermediate, and long-term solutions. But after we get, obviously the first thing is to get through hurricane season. we got Nate staring down on us right as we speak. Yes. But going forward, what would your recommendations be to get it, get it back up to where people don't get scared every time there's a rain event that they're going to flood? I think the important thing is uh, Mayor Landry called for a root cause analysis. I think it needs to be more like an investigation something that is robust, something mm -hmm. that's critical, something that is, you know, by a group that has no ties to the mayor or the council or anybody at the Sewage and Water Board. And someone's Somebody, going to give an analyst evaluation yes, and, if, and a it, critical evaluation. What we found after the flood 12 years ago was that, you know, the Corps kind of e investigated itself and the right. ASCE kind of investigated the Corps, but, you know, everybody had their fingers on everybody's backs. Now we need a real investigation, a real critical look at, at what happened from the top to the bottom. The president of the Sewage and Water Board, what the board knew, who told the board what, they knew did it, the yeah. board read those doggone reports? They spent s easily a million dollars a year on these reports. They're all online. They all describe what pumps were working on what year. And nothing was done. Well, very little was done. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Well, awesome. thank you for being with us here today, and I hope you continue to focus on this issue and provide your insight from a professional standpoint, because that's what's needed.